And welcome to worship. We do have a few announcements this morning. The first is a reminder that the cellar closet is open every Saturday from nine o'clock until 12 o'clock. We have drive in worship in the Lawson lot, Sundays at 9 15 a.m., and in the sanctuary on Sundays at 10 15 a.m. We also, of course, have our online videos available on Facebook, YouTube, and the church website. On Monday, November 21st, the Board of Finance will meet at five o'clock in the ladies' parlor. On Saturday, November 26th, all are welcome to help us decorate our sanctuary for Advent and Christmas. We'll start at 10 a.m. On the Sunday, December 4th, the diaconate will meet after the 1015 service in the ladies' parlor. And on Wednesday, December 7th, the church council will meet at 6.30 in the ladies' parlor. Celebrating this week, Lori ba Barrett celebrates her birthday on November 23rd. Happy birthday, Lori. And happy Thanksgiving to everybody who is celebrating Thanksgiving on Thursday. As we turn our minds and hearts to worship, let us consider these words. I praise you, God, with all my heart. Mighty God, how great you are. In your majesty and glory, mighty God, how great you are. Come, let us praise God. I invite you now to join me in our call to worship by responding with the words in bold type. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon God's name. Make known God's deeds among the peoples. God blesses us with gifts of love, with food and clothing, home and family. God blesses us with daily work, and all we need from day to day. God protects us in times of danger and guards us from every evil. Therefore, we shall offer thanks and praise to the Lord our God. As we come to our time of prayer this morning, we keep in our prayers, Kent Lawson, Joyce Wilcox, Karen Ball, and Kent Songer. Our prayer today is based on two prayers, one written by John Birch and shared on faith and worship, and a prayer shared on the Interfaith Worker Justice website. Let us pray. On this day, O oh God, we praise to give thanks for family and friends, for the food we eat and all that we have. Creator God, we give thanks for daily bread. And while we give thanks for this food, we remember and pray for the farm workers whose labors made our meals possible and all who work to bring the harvest home. We remember and pray for farm workers, truck drivers, grocery store clerks, and the cooks who make all of our meals possible. While we pray in thanks, we pray for those among us who have less to be thankful for. And we pray that all people receive enough through their labors so that all can live in security and that no one goes hungry for lack of decent wages. We pray for those whose harvest is poor, whose crops have withered, water is tainted. We pray for those whose children are starving and we ask that you help those who bring relief and bestow on us an unaccustomed generosity. 
that all might share from your garden and all might sing your praise. We ask, oh God, that you help us to seek and find ways to share our bounty with all those in need. We ask that you forgive our ingratitude. We have so much, and yet too often we waste what you have given. Creator God, provider of all, we bring our thanks today, and we bless each other that the beauty of this world and the love that created it might be expressed through our lives and that we might be blessings to others. We pray these things in the name of your son, Jesus, who taught us to pray together saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture lesson today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you of not more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They not, neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of those. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will God not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and God's righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow brings worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. Here ends our reading. May God add to our understanding of it. I start this morning with an excerpt from Max Lucado's book, Eye in the Storm. He writes, it happens every Friday evening, almost without fail, when the sun resembles a giant orange and is starting to dip into the blue ocean, old Ed comes strolling along the beach to his favorite pier. Clutched in his bony hand is a bucket of shrimp. Ed walks out to the end of the pier where it seems he almost has the world to himself. The glow of the sun is a golden bronze now. Everybody's gone, except for a few joggers on the beach. Standing out on the end of the pier, Ed is alone with his thoughts and his bucket of shrimp. Before long, however, he is no longer alone. 
Up in the sky, a thousand white dots come screeching and squawking, winging their way toward that lanky frame, standing there at the end of the pier. Before long, dozens of seagulls have enveloped him, their wings fluttering and flapping wildly. Ed stands there, tossing shrimp to the hungry birds. As he does, if you listen closely, you can hear him say with a smile, thank you, thank you. In a few short minutes, the bucket is empty, but Ed doesn't leave. He stands there lost in thought as though transported to another time and place. Invariably, one of the gulls lands on his sea bleached weather beaten hat an old military hat he's been wearing for years. When he finally turns around and begins to walk back towards the beach, a few of the birds hop along the pier with him until he gets to the stairs. And then they too fly away. And old Ed quietly makes his way down to the end of the beach and on home. To onlookers, he's just another old codger lost in his own weird world, feeding the seagulls with a bucket full of shrimp. That's too bad. They do well to know him better. His full name is Eddie Rickenbacker. He was a famous hero back in World War II. On one of his flying missions across the Pacific, he and his seven-member crew went down. Miraculously, all of the men survived crawled out of their plane, and climbed into a life raft. Captain Rickerbacher and his crew floated for days on the rough waters of the Pacific. They fought the sun. They fought sharks. Most of all, they fought hunger. By the eighth day, their rations ran out. No food, no water. They were hundreds of miles from land, and no one knew where they were. They needed a miracle. That afternoon, they had a simple devotional service and prayed for that miracle. They tried to nap. Eddie leaned back and pulled his military cap over his nose, but time dragged. All he could hear was the slap of the waves against the raft. Suddenly, Eddie felt something land on the top of his cap. It was a seagull. Old Ed would later describe how he sat perfectly still, planning his next move. With a flash of his hand and a squawk from the gull, he managed to grab it and wring its neck. He tore the feathers off and he and his starving crew made a meal, a very slight meal for eight men. Then they used the intestines for bait. With it, they caught fish, which gave them food and more bait, and the cycle continued. With that simple survival technique, they were able to endure the rigors of sea until they were found and rescued after 24 days at sea. Eddie Rickenbacker lived many years beyond that ordeal, but he never forgot the sacrifice of that first life-saving seagull, and he never stopped saying thank you. That's why almost every Friday night, he would walk to the end of the pier with a bucket full of shrimp and a heart full of gratitude. Who would think that a seagull could be the answer to prayer? Who would think that a seagull would be a great gift from God? Who would think that a seagull could be exactly what is needed? And yet for Captain Rickenbacker and his crew, that's exactly what a single seagull was. The answer to prayer, a miracle, God giving them exactly what they needed. It's amazing how God answers our prayers and takes care of our needs. We're told throughout scripture that God provides for us, that we shouldn't worry about our lives or our needs because God provides. And we see throughout scripture the ways in which God does just that. 
God provided Abraham and Sarah with a family. God provided manna for the Israelites in the desert. God provided safe passage through the Red Sea. So often we get focused on what we want or what we don't have, that we fail to notice that God is providing us with exactly what we need. There's a story of a man named Jack who was walking along a steep cliff one day when he accidentally got too close to the edge and he fell. On the way down, he grabbed a branch, which temporarily stopped his fall. He looked down into his horror, saw that the canyon fell straight down for more than a thousand feet. He couldn't hang on to that branch forever, and there was no way to climb back up. So Jack began yelling for help, hoping that someone passing by would hear him and lower a rope or something. Help! Help! Is anyone up there? Help! He yelled for hours, but no one heard him. He was about to give up when he heard a voice. Jack, Jack, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. I'm down here. I can see you, Jack. Are you all right? Yes. But who are you? Where are you? I'm the Lord, Jack. I'm everywhere. The Lord? You mean God? Yep, that's me. Oh, God, please help me. I promise if you'll get me down from here, I'll stop sinning. I'll be a really good person, God. I'll serve you for the rest of my life. Whoa, easy on the promises there, Jack. Let's just get you down from there. Then we'll talk. Now, here's what I want you to do. Listen carefully. All right, Lord, I'll do anything. Just tell me what to do. Okay, Jack, let go of the branch. What? Jack, I said, let go of the branch. Trust me, let go. And there was a long silence. Finally, Jack yelled, help, help. Is anyone else? Have you found yourself asking God if there's another way? Maybe God provided a seagull when you were expecting something much tastier. Or maybe God asked you to trust in order to be kept safe. Our scripture lesson this morning reminds us that God provides, that God gives us what we need. But we have to remember that's not always what we want. This Thanksgiving, it's my prayer that our eyes and our hearts are opened to the seagulls, the rescues from the side of the ledge, and all the other ways in which God provides, even in those forms that are less than what we expected. Let us pray. Loving God, we ask that you help us to trust in you, help us to acknowledge, appreciate, and give thanks for all the ways you provide for us, especially the seagulls. Amen. I hope you all have a great Thanksgiving, and I hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Today, may we discover what is beautiful and call it a blessing. May we be bold to praise God with our thanksgiving. And having been blessed in this time together, let us go forth to be blessings for others. Amen.
to win. 